been 24 years since uh, you were last at the United Nations General Assembly. Can you share your reflections on your return to the global platform and the significance of Fiji's presence at the General Assembly? For me personally uh, and for Fiji, it's uh, specifically uh, significant in the sense that uh, 24 years ago, uh, we were just coming out of the uh, era of the formulation of uh, the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, from 1998-99, we were looking at the new millennium and what we would like to uh, see at the, uh, as the international landscape in uh, areas of uh, common interest, common goals. So they formulated what was first understood to be the Millennium Development Goals and later became the uh, Sustainable Development Goals <coughs> on issues like climate change, uh, gender considerations, uh, poverty, hunger, those things that uh, uh, smaller developing nations were very concerned about and the, uh, the bigger development partners were willing to assist in. So when we came this time, we have been, that had been running for some years. And you're now into COP 27, 28 uh, considerations. So it's been 27, 28 years since the uh, Earth Summit in Rio, <coughs> which uh, I sent a minister to participate in. So in the world scene today, only uh, Senator Kerry and I were there at the beginning, and we are still there. So it is easy for me to uh, communicate with him. Uh, and we did that on the wings of the UNGA, uh, and uh, it, it has been very fruitful for me. Uh, and to see how far people, the countries have come in their uh, aim to achieve those uh, goals, and where we are lagging behind, what should be done to keep abreast with the international uh, desires Excellent. and plans and objectives and the various protocols that have been put in place to uh, achieve those targets. So it has been a very, very good uh, eye-opener for me, what has happened the last 24 years and what has happened since the uh, formulation of the ideas of uh, a Millennium Goals uh, or the Millennium Goals that became Sustainable Development Goals. During the attendance, Pacific Island leaders also met with the Secretary General uh, of the UN. Can you elaborate on the outcomes of that meeting and the key issues that were discussed? We, the uh, Pacific Island countries is a, a powerful voice of the developing uh, <coughs> economies in the world right now all former colonies of the European powers and uh, <clears throat> since our independence we have uh, had mixed fortunes uh, in our uh, own uh, independence goals so <clears throat> coming together and speaking with the United Nations uh, uh, Secretary General was, uh, was good but we've always had a sympathetic ear in the Secretary Generals of the past all succeeding Secretary Generals have been uh, very considerate of the Pacific Islands uh, concerns. So it was uh, very encouraging to see that and for him to give us a time where we could uh, interact with him and with each other was very, very encouraging. <coughs> for us in Fiji, uh, sitting there with our other Pacific uh, brothers and sisters, the leaders of the Pacific, the PIF. Uh, <clears throat> we are in a, a privileged position because of our long association with the United Nations peacekeeping. So we, were, we spoke with, uh, with a stronger conviction of the need for, for us to maintain the cohesion in our region and also reach out to the bigger powers, our former colonial masters, to keep, at, uh, keep us abreast in the development programs of today. Uh, we can be still very powerful in, uh, <coughs> in international negotiations, 
and we're willing to play our part, small as we are, we're willing to play our part in uh, international affairs. Um, I think one of the most important issues that had uh, come out of the uh, UN General Assembly, especially in the participation of Pacific Island states, is uh, obviously peace, security and climate change. I think one of the challenges is how do we access uh, uh, climate finance? Um, and this is something that uh, obviously you had discussed with uh, your advisors as well. Uh, could you shed some light on uh, specific obstacles Pacific Island countries uh, face in terms of securing adequate funding uh, for climate adaptation and mitigation efforts to meet our SDG goals? The, uh, the problem is that the Pacific Island territories, Pacific Island countries of the PIF, are the ones who are really needing these funds urgently. Uh, with the rising sea levels, uh, some islands are slowly disappearing under under <coughs> under the uh, under the sea. So we would like to uh, encourage our development partners, particularly the fund donors, to uh, make the accessibility of the funds easier. Uh, we are now going to be having the services of a an official from Australia to help us in the in the climate change uh, division environment division of um, of the ministry that I head <coughs> just to help us with the various processes that we have that may not be clear to us we have come and spoken about the problems and what needs to be done it's the processes of accessing those uh, climate change funds uh, uh, and developing our own uh, strategies and actually ec developing the the answers to those. If you're trying to cut down on uh, the use of fossil fuel, how do we speed up our programs for renewable energy sources uh, and how do we access the funds for those? So those are the problems we are facing, not only Fiji but uh, most, if not all, of the Pacific Island Forum territories. In, in your uh, uh, statement, um, your country statement, um, you you spoke about your vision, um, particularly the concept of uh, the Pacific Zone of Peace. And I think you re-emphasized that also in your <coughs> meeting at the U.S. Uh, Peace Leaders Meeting. Um, could you articulate the concept and uh, explain in detail what this concept to you um, in terms of regional uh, geopolitics in the Pacific, what that would look like? We do not want to be torn up uh, between the two major powers of the East and West or, East, or even uh, East and West uh, uh, strategic considerations. So we would like to be a zone of peace in the sense that we can interact, we can cooperate with uh, both the East and the West because we are right in the middle. We are the connection, we are the, uh, the, uh, the access point and the main thoroughfare, maritime thoroughfare between East and West. So <clears throat> we would like that area to be free for world, for the world uh, navigation, uh, free of uh, military threats. When you have any, any uh, threat of any military intervention, uh, of our logistics routes, uh, insurance, shipping insurances go up. So the cost of the delivery of our needed um, supplies go up. Uh, so we suffer. We have a very small uh, economic basis and uh, we cannot uh, weather those uh, shocks of uh, the ups and downs of prices. Uh, we need the area to be free. We, not, we need it to be a thoroughfare where people can move in and out, east and west, freely without worrying about any interdiction. Um, the, the, the concept of the Pacific Zone of Peace or, or the vision that you have, um, what was the reception that you received from other Pacific Island leaders? Or it was taken up very, very... Uh, uh, cheerfully by the, the rest of the Pacific Island leaders. But that is the nature of the Pacific Islanders. We are people of peace. Although we all come from uh, 
worry, uh, warring uh, tribes and uh, we had that in the past. But now we are peace loving people. We, we are happy uh, with, uh, with life. So <clears throat> we would like the, the area to be a zone of peace. I, I, I put the word zone there, but the idea of having a region of peace or uh, uh, an ocean of peace has always been there. The Pacific Islands itself, the Pacific, the Pacific, the name Pacific means the ocean of peace. <coughs> so uh, it's not new, uh, although putting it as the zone of peace was first mooted in uh, Papua New Guinea when we had the summit with the uh, Indian uh, Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi, and uh, President Biden had to uh, cancel his trip uh, and only sent uh, the Secretary of State <coughs> Blinken to come to that. So it's not an, a new idea. I put it into a new format by crying out or proposing a zone of peace uh, and it's very well and quickly taken up by, by every, everyone else. Even the President uh, of the United States, President Biden, mentioned that uh, later on. So it is something that everybody had been thinking of, thinking about, hoping for, but nobody had brought it out into the open so that we can start talking about it and how do we do it. Have, have there been discussions on how we will approach it now? No, we would like to, because it's going to be uh, <coughs> proposed by the uh, Pacific Islands Forum, I'd like to bring it up formally for us to adopt uh, in the forum meeting in uh, <coughs> Rarotonga in November, and from there take it on to the other fora, international fora that we will be talking to. Prime Minister, can you share your views on this year's uh, U.S. Pacific Island Forum Leaders Summit and its significance in shaping uh, regional cooperation and diplomacy? <coughs> For me, personally, it was very eye-opening. It's the first summit I have attended as a Prime Minister. We did not have any summit when I was Prime Minister, but it shows how, f the, the, uh, <coughs> how far we have come from the days when the Pacific Island territories were seen as small island developing states, now we can talk in the, in the world stage with uh, the president of uh, one of the uh, strongest, biggest economies and military powers uh, as equals, as heads of governments. And uh, that was very encouraging for me. And uh, to say that it can be done Interaction can be just a human interaction, uh, leaders' interaction, rather than uh, us standing in the corner and in awe of the President of the United States of America and not being able to come forward to uh, interact personally with him. So the forum for me was a, was a I mean the summit was a great uh, uh, step in our development, in our, our self-view of ourselves and our self-worth, you know, when we consider that he can come down and talk to each of us uh, like that, and we can interact with them and we give them our national problems uh, directly. Uh, that was very, very encouraging. Um, particularly two, two countries were not able to make it this year. Um, obviously, uh, Vanuatu had to return because of a vote of no confidence back home. Um, the Solomon Islands, it has been suggested that they did not attend because of their close affinity to China. How challenging is it to maintain regional solidarity in the face of competing um, uh, geopolitical interests in the region? There is nothing wrong with uh, the Solomon Islands having uh, close relationships with China. We all have diplomatic relationships with China. We have had them since the 1970s and since 1973 when the People's Republic of China was recognized by the United Nations as, as China. So those countries that had uh, the uh, <coughs> Republic of China, uh, later on known as Republic of China and Taiwan, uh, could, could, uh, could switch to recognizing and having full domestic, full uh, 
diplomatic relationships with, uh, <coughs> with the People's Republic of China. And we can continue to have that uh, without any, any problems with interacting with each other. So when the Solomon's uh, uh, Prime Minister couldn't come, I felt there were more pressing needs at home, just like our colleague from Vanuatu. And Australia, <coughs> Australia and New Zealand didn't come to both the uh, General Assembly and the summit. So uh, it's nothing to worry about. Solomon will always be Solomon. We have a very close uh, relationship with them. We have uh, uh, those that originated in, in the Solomon Islands living as uh, Fijians now. Uh, very few of them are. <coughs> in fact, all of those in, in Fiji now are. Uh, greater part in a greater in a greater part uh, Fijians. Um, this is the second uh, U.S. Uh, uh, peace leaders meeting. Um, I suppose it looks like that this will be an annual thing. Um, what specific mm -hmm. outcomes do you hope following this year's meeting um, that this summit will achieve in terms of tangible tangible benefits to the region? First of all, it will. Uh, <laughs> assure the rest of the world that we are we are a stable region having the the, the american or the united states uh, with us talking to us <clears throat> they don't have to have uh, a military presence uh, in the pacific uh, while some may think that uh, the only tangible visible and credible uh, factor in one's relationship would be the presence or some military force uh, for the United States it doesn't have to be that. <coughs> uh, so uh, they understand we have our relationships where, and we have our development programs going with uh, the People's Republic of China. So there is really, really nothing for you know for us for them to worry about, nor us to worry about whether we are seen to be close to this side of place. We deal with them as normal uh, diplomatic development partners.